What's going on, folks? Let's talk more Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. We took a little bit of break there with all of the news coverage, but it's time to get back so we can close this out. This time we're going to be talking about monsters. Now, the bestiary is on my list, and it will likely be the next video that's not tied to news or something else. But right now I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the monstrous horror monster section and how I think it's kind of throwaway. It's got some things you can tidbit, little bits you can snag here and there, and ultimately this will be a video on the Bagman, right? I could have done a separate video on the Bagman, or lack thereof in my opinion, but this will cover that as well. So why don't we go ahead and jump over to D&D Beyond, and we'll take a look. So I was reading through, to just reacquaint myself with this because I haven't read it for a while, and basically... It's saying there's tons of great monster stuff. Use it and try to change it to make it unique. Uh, so they talk a little bit here about how you determining the or not the aura, the origin rather of your monsters. How's that? How does that come about? Building notorious monsters. So they have this here, right? This whistling fiend, which they make up right here, and they say, you know, it's a horrifying skeletal figure that corrupts um uh, the land wherever it walks, it has a habit of whistling cheerfully as it does it. And hence the whistling fiend. But it doesn't give us a stat block for it. It just says, like, it has little, its notoriety has little to do with its stat block. Use chapter four of the Dungeon Master's Guide to build an interesting monster. And I, th I don't remember what chapter four is off the top of my head. That might be, like, the villain chapter. That's cool, but I, I like, I'm sure you... This looks pretty cool. He's holding a glowing heart in his hand, and he's literally dripping with some sort of viscous goo, ike or something. I'd like a stat block for that. Not just like a, stat's not important, make him scary. Okay, but if he's scary, in theory, because he's a boogeyman, and the players encounter him and he's just a chump, was it worth it? I'm going to say no, right? I mean, if you've had an entire movie, think, think um... I don't know, Friday the 13th, right? Jason Voorhees, terrifying monster, slasher, supernatural killer, hold the, all these stories about all the murders that he's done, and then you encounter him, and you just, like, hit him with a baseball bat, and he dies. End of story. He's a pushover, chump, no big deal. Doesn't matter how scary the stories were building up to him. If he doesn't hold up to that in a fight, like, you know, the dying, getting back up, being supernaturally fast chasing down people while it looks like he's walking, all that kind of stuff. Like, that's scary, sure. But if it's not backed up when you encounter him, it wasn't worth it. That's my opinion. I'm entitled to my own opinion. You might disagree or agree. Let me know your thoughts. Then they talk a little bit about how to describe the monster, right? To, in, you know, to try to make it scary, right? It's horror is based a lot on how you perceive things. So they're talking about emphasize the wrongness. It's weird. It's out of place. It looks like a humanoid skeleton dripping with its own gelatinous muscle. Its skull curves to the suggest a point suggestive of a sickle. Okay, it looks weird. Again, stat block would help. Engage all the senses. Describe visceral elements of the creature. Uh, oily flesh exudes, whistle tune, blah, blah, blah. Sounds like a nursery rhyme. They're telling you to make it so people aren't, they don't just see or in their head see this creature. They can smell it feel like they could touch it and hopefully not taste it. And it says make it personal. Don't dictate a character's actions in response to what they see. Um, but you can touch on the feelings that the creature provokes, leaving it up to the players. Your gut twists in revulsion. The acrid sting, air stings your nostrils. That's kind of an interesting one, too. What they're saying is you want to say things like your gut twists in revulsion, but your character might not, the, the player character might not feel that their gut twists in revulsion and that's that where they're saying it's a fine line. Don't tell your players how they feel. Try to invoke this fear in them, which is also weird because, again, you're trying to invoke a... They're saying don't scare the player, scare the character. I don't know. When they talk about different tactics and they say, like, oh, okay, the goblins in Kartakis are actually hobgoblins in terms of stats, but they're known for a tactic called feasting, which is where they eat people's faces off. But it does two damage. They grapple you and then they do their unarmed strike on your face, which does two points of damage. And they're like, but the damage isn't important. The face biting is shocking. Well, if you bite my face and I have 50 hit points and I take two hit points of damage, I'm going to be like, all right, whatever. And I'm going to kill you. Like, I'm going to fight and knock you back. Like, if it, you could, again, describe like, oh, it pulls a chunk out of your face. And then it's just like, okay, 
but it did two points of damage? Like, how much face HP do I have? I don't know. Again, to me, like, maybe... I guess if you work into the fact that, like, you have a chunk bitten out of your face, and then you say something like you now automatically have the points worth of damage as a negative to persuasion checks or something because you're horribly disfigured, that might be something notable. That makes it scarier, but two hit points worth of damage? Hmm. Um, monsters become more fearsome if, fearsome if they use tactics like ganging up on the least armored characters and taking bites from unconscious foes. That's true. That will scare a player, right? So let me ask you this. As a player or a DM, how many times does your tactic turn into, well, I've got the party and I've got my monsters and they hit this character and they take them down to unconsciousness and they leave them because they're in theory not a threat and they go for the next character, right? That I feel like most of us use that tactic, right? I take you down to unconsciousness, you're there, and I move on, and I go to somebody else. Which in theory gives the other party enough time to cast a healing spell so you don't make death saving throws and you pop back up. I think we're good there, right? Everybody kind of agrees with that. <laughs> so uh, if they knock them down and they continue to attack them, dealing damage making them fail death saving throws and again if it's melee attacks that are automatic critical hits giving them to fail two death saving throws that will instill fear in your players that's i think that's more of a mechanical fear than a necessarily i think a fear i mean i guess maybe it works into a horror fear as well but it's definitely more of a fear of the mechanics knowing that if i attack you while you're unconscious on the ground it's an automatic critical hit which is two failed death saving throws um, but that will scare your players, without a doubt. So then it talks a little bit here about monstrous traits, um, and it tells you basically, again, which is something I don't particularly love, but it's just, it's not, it's, it's like, take some, a trait from something else and apply it to a different monster. Take a monster, so it says, uh, so who again has blood, uh, blood frenzy, uh, add it to a different monster that makes it a bloodthirsty horror. Traits such as a troglodyte's chameleon skin or a uh, doppelganger's ambusher can make a monster feel more sinister. So they're saying things like this, and that's good advice. That's very simple, clean ways to reskin monsters or just adapt different features. So I do like that. I would like, I would like a list personally of like, here's what we would prefer. Here's a couple of examples of interesting creatures. And then they add a couple of extra things here. It says monstrous minions. Here's a couple things you can add to monsters uh in the mists right so there's alien mind um if someone tries to read its thoughts uh the creature must succeed on an intelligence saving throw with a dc equal to 10 plus the minion's intelligence or be stunned for a minute stunned creature and repeat the saving throw uh minion's mind the minion can't be compelled to act in a way contrary to its master sacrificial minion when it dies the master regains hit points uh, equal to four times the minion's challenge rating as long as the master is within 100 feet. That's pretty cool because you could have a monster with minions and you're killing the minions, but you're actually healing the master at the same time. Uh, selfless bodyguard, when an attack hits its master and the minion's within five feet, it uses its reaction to take the attack. Or telepathic minion, the minion and its master can communicate telepathically with each other as long as they're on the same plane of existence. So this is, again, minion-based things here. So if we scroll down, then we have creating unique nightmares. And this is my biggest complaint. I don't like that the Bagman is in its own cool stat block with its own cool features. They basically are saying, use a troll, a standard-ass troll from the Monster Manual, this guy right here, which is a challenge rating 5. Doesn't have too much going on. Regeneration is the big one, right? It doesn't, it regenerates hit points unless it takes acid or fire damage. Um, a bite and a claw attack. And then it says, considering the origins and appearance, the troll is literally being a troll. Uh, being a troll is, if it's important to you, to make your troll feel notorious, think of what would scare adventurers when they're vulnerable and they're, what they're sensitive about. You come up with an idea for a creature that can come from anywhere, even within the creature's own gear, meaning the bagman, with tactics and traits in mind. Uh, think of your troll as an abductor and give it the grappler trait of a mimic and the amorphous trait of a black pudding. Finally, don't think of the troll as a minion, but give it the alien mind trait to reflect its tormented psyche. Remember the whole concept of being stunned if you try to read its mind. And you flesh out the story and give it the name, the Bagman. 
So it's this troll, standard challenge rating 5, with it has advantage on attack rolls against a grappled creature, and then the amorphous part of a black pudding it can squeeze through a 1-inch narrow space. Ultimately, this amorphous trait I don't think infects challenge rating in any way. That's more of like a flavor thing, I feel like. Again, it allows you to it's sneak into places you wouldn't normally be able to sneak into and possibly get to the players when they think they're safe. The grappler thing, it says advantage on attack rolls against any creature grappled by it, but a troll in and of itself does not have any specific means of grappling. It doesn't have anything unique like the adhesive trait of a mimic. It just has grappler. So you'd have to forego one of your three attacks to grapple a creature, of which you have no bonus to athletics for the purposes of grapple checks. And then if you do grapple them, then you can from there make attacks with advantage on them. So it might make it a challenge rating six, possibly. Um, but that's it. That's the bag, man. It doesn't have a cool, unique stat block to represent this awesome, absolutely terrifying looking monster. It's use three. Now, I guess that in theory covers what I had talked about before saying I would like to see a, a couple of examples where I said apply these things and show us. I guess the Bagman is the example of that. So I ultimately do get what I ask for, but the story that they built and the way they made like a whole Dragon Plus article covering the Bagman, I felt like it needed to be something a little bit more unique, not just a, a reskinned troll. And I guess in theory, it's fine to have it be that way. Um, but I would have liked, I guess, more, um, I guess more like an improved list of minions, personally. Like, for I don't know. I guess I'll never be happy in, in the, uh, you know, I just don't love this aspect. The same thing with like how the Dark Lords in this book are basically just reskinned uh, versions of Monster Manual monsters. And then they tell you, here's the legend of the Bagman, right? Beware the Bagman. Urban legend of an adventurer who sought to escape doom by abandoning his party and hiding inside a bag of holding. He tried to leave. He became lost. Over time, strange forces of this magical in-between place turned him into a monster. Now every night, the bagman slips out of a random bag of holding. If it doesn't find his home, he drags someone back into the bag with him and leaves behind some trinket from his hidden kingdom of lost junk. Some say that if you speak too loudly over an open bag of holding or whisper, follow my voice into a magical storage space three times, the bagman will come for you, similar to like a Bloody Mary situation. Uh, any character might know the story of the bagman, what the bagman is, and how you use the urban legend is up to you. Is it true? Is it fake? Um, if an object vanishes overnight, uh, overnight rather, or if someone has something that isn't theirs in their bag of holding, is the bagman to blame? Is it just a monster that preys on adventurers, or is it the dark lord of its own hidden domain? Possibilities for horror adventures are endless, and nowhere, especially not adventurer's gear, is safe. So I do like the concept of the Bagman quite a bit, because it does take something that you would consider, I would say probably for granted, the safety of your own magical items and your own gear, and that instills another degree of fear, I would say. Uh, I just, I don't know, I just wanted its own, when I first read about it, I was super jazzed, and uh, it's basically a challenge rating 5, maybe challenge rating 6 creature. And it just like, it, uh, to my point about Jason Voorhees, right? If the Bagman can be taken out by two fireball spells and like one uh, round of attacks from a fighter, is it that scary? Yes, the the you can deal with the atmospheric horror nature of this thing that's creepy and spooky, but if it ultimately just gets wrecked by the interaction with the party, is it scary ultimately? I guess it was at the time, but it all falls apart when it's kind of put in front of the players. I don't know. Maybe I'm way off base here, but I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Next video, we will dive into the bestiary proper and go through the monsters contained there. There definitely is some cool ones. And uh, there's quite a few, and they span everywhere from challenge rating 1 8th all the way up to 21. Again, none of those, though, are Dark Lords. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.